This episode would stem from a meal plan that one of my clients got. 6 a.m., fish choice with spinach, tomatoes, full-fat natural Greek yogurt and a green tea. Fish at 6 a.m. Fish at 6 a.m. I mean, I'd have a rice cake at 6 a.m., but I don't <laughs> think I'd have fish. 8 a.m. was fish oils and estro detox. Why, why is he giving him that? It just makes no sense at all. Which also says that this PT is clearly on gear. This is the only way to do it. If you want it enough, you'll do it. If I tell you to eat dirt, you'll eat dirt. I, I literally couldn't believe it. I was like, I've heard some things. I've never heard of a coach telling someone to eat dirt That's before. That's fucking mental. 8 o'clock in the morning, I'll have fish and a rice cake. Welcome back again. I'm Jake. I'm Jake, I think. And we are, yeah, we are back. It's been a while. It feels it's like been it's well. been ages. You yeah. replaced me for the last few episodes. I've replaced you twice now. So <laughs> twice. Just, yeah, two you, were drink, you were drinking beers with the last one. I was like, we've never had beers. We even had <laughs> a Christmas do we? We didn't have beers. That's the, the only reason we did that was because it was a Friday night. So I think we had it but like, it was literally like 6 p.m. by the yeah, time we got yeah. it. And we'd already been for a beer before. So like, right, we've just got to keep this going now. So we'd have one pint. So we went to the shop. We got two uh, big Moretti's, me and uh, me and the chef. And we just, yeah. We so were, that's why he was being so nice. That's why he's been so nice. bought you some beers. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. I was. I said to him, "Listen, mate, if, if I'm gonna get you some beers, you need to say nice things about me." Yeah, <laughs> that's and, uh, the deal. Basically, kind of got him pissed. And <laughs> no, yeah. no, it has been a while, though. Hasn't it? It's been about it has. two months since we've been in. I think in it has because we've been doing a couple of guest ones, haven't we? So we had Rowan on, we've had Tom on. <laughs> we have. We've, we've really obviously good. had the lads on as yeah, well. Sam and Will. We've been trying them out on. Well, not not ideally, but just having to use doing them online, which it yeah. works okay. Yeah, it, it, does, it works yeah. okay, but it's not yeah. it's nowhere near as good. It's not as aesthetically um, pleasing as the the studio, no. the casting couch. No, not with. <laughs> and not with my like terrible Wi-Fi that just cuts out all the time. <laughs> but no, I think that they've gone all right. But yeah, well, you weren't you weren't too well, were you? No, no. I, I'd, um, I mean, to be fair, it was just like it's probably me just being a little bitch at the same time. That's what Louise was telling me anyway. Um, but I know I felt I was really ill. Ill. I was really ill for like you we were met, bad. To we met me back in here, weren't we? That's the week we, we were meant, meant to be in be here, and I had to here, reschedule yeah. it. And it was just it was just a leg. Like I was just like coughing, like just headaches and stuff. But to the point where. I had to push my check-ins back and I've never had to do that. No. I was just that bad. Well, you even messaged me being like, I literally like, I'm, I'm not eating. I'm, I can't get out of bed. I think I need to push my check-ins back, but I really don't want to have to do yeah. that. Like, is, do you, like basically like, have Should you done do that it? before? Should you yeah. do it? And I was literally like, yes. Mm. Like if you can't do the job properly, then it's fine. And I, I've only ever, I was said to you, I've only ever had to do it once yeah. and I felt really bad about doing it. And you're only pushing it back a day. I know. And everyone was completely fine with it. Like, yeah, it made yeah. no difference at all in the grand scheme of things. But you know, when you just kind of stress about stuff, like, because yeah. you're always on time every single week. So and how, like, how long have you been coaching now? <sighs> online, four years. Four years. And it's the first time first you've ever time had to I've push them back. back. Yeah. yeah. I may be able to do it for like one or two clients here and there if like I've had to get Thea from nursery if yeah, she's been yeah, poorly yeah. or something. But I've never had to push like a full day back. Yeah. So I was like, I was just stressed about it like big time. Um, but yeah, no, I was just, I was just fucking, I couldn't get out of bed. Like I was, yeah. I messaged you, I sent you a picture of him. I look like pure shit. Yeah, he did. <laughs> um, I said, it's probably best we're not today, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so no, it's, uh, yeah, it was just a, and it still seems to be doing the rounds now. Like I was speaking to my clients, like, I still half my clients are like Everyone's really poorly. It. Everyone's got um, it, yeah. And I think it's, is it the, call it like the 100 day cold or some shit? I've heard that on the news a few times. Yeah, something like that. And it just seems to be like, I've, I feel like I'm over it. And then I'll push myself maybe too hard with my training or something mm. like that. Something will happen or like a, a like a really busy weekend. And then I see it just seems to kind of creep back in and I'm like, yeah. can go away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it just, just keeps coming back. Yeah, no, it's I've seen it when I've just been training the last few months and chatting to a few people. And I'll be chatting to them and then they'll be like, oh, they'll be like, uh, keep your distance up because I'm really mm. ill at the minute. I'm like, yeah. what are you doing here then? I know, I know. <laughs> I don't want it. Yeah. And I do think it's I do think it's nursery as well. Like every time you drop the ear off, honestly. And you go into nursery oh, and yeah. all the kids are just there with like snotty noses, fucking coughing, sneezing. I'm like, oh, great. This means that she's bringing someone else home. Yeah. But kids are quite resilient. So like they'll get poorly, but, but they'll, pass it off they'll just pass it on to you. Yeah. Yeah. And they're fine. They're just like, oh, I've got a snotty nose and just, yeah, yeah. just wipe it all over the carpets and stuff. Yeah. Whereas it actually kills, you know, you've got to look after the child then and then <laughs> actually go to work. So yeah, inconsiderate. But, yeah, <laughs> that bad you had to push your checking day back, yeah. which is the first time, which actually it, it ties in quite nicely, doesn't it, to what we want to talk about. Which is uh, bad which, coaching. <laughs> And I know we, we've done an episode before called like coaching horror stories or something, but this is almost like an updated version yeah. of just some 
horrendous stories that we've come across from mainly our own clients from past mm-hmm. coaches. It is our own clients. Yeah. You know what? I've actually had a few more recently. It's just only come to my mind, which we can obviously talk about in a bit more detail. But this this one kind of stemmed from that one yeah, client of yeah. mind in it. And then we just started talking about stuff and you came up with a few things that your clients had said to you and things like, fuck it, we'll do an episode on yeah. this. But it puts it into context. Because like we have days where we'll message each other being like, I want to make sure I'm still doing everything right and as well as I could be. Can you just yeah. check this over for me? How does this sound? Like, is, am I saying the right thing here? Is this as good as it could be? And we'll constantly be doing that back and forth. And like you said, when you were ill, you were really worried about pushing it back, even though you literally couldn't get out of bed. And then it puts it into context when we get stories through like this and we're like, okay, no, actually, maybe we're doing okay because if this is the standard that's out there. But well, we know the standard, don't we? We know the standards. Like, and don't get me wrong, we're not hating on all coaches. Here. No, no, there's a lot there's of There's a lot of very, very good coaches. We've had quite a few on our podcast recently as well who are all very, very good coaches. But, like, there just seems to be this still... And I think you and you and Will and Sam spoke about this on the podcast. Yeah, we did. Too. And, you know, it's this thing where I think coaches and PTs or not even PTs and coaches, I think people just look at coaching it's an easy book, essentially. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a, yeah. like they see it and they're like, oh, I can post some shit on social media, get a few clients in, give them a meal plan. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's so much more than that. And I know we speak about it all the time. But yeah, anyway, without going into too much detail, like this is this episode stemmed from a meal plan that one of my clients got. Bearing in mind, this client, all he wanted to do was lose a little bit of body fat, trim down a bit, like get back into the gym. He was not looking to step on stage or anything yeah, like that. Don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's just, I'll read out one of the days and we can have a bit of a laugh at it. So this is Monday. Okay. So bearing in mind that it literally has got a seven day meal plan here, but this was Monday, 6am fish choice with spinach, tomatoes, full fat, natural Greek yogurt, and a green tea. Fish at 6am. Fish at 6am. <laughs> I mean, I'd have a rice cake at 6am, but I don't <laughs> think I'd have fish. I mean... The the thing is there, like, and I'm assuming, I think he's meant to train after that as well, which is just ridiculous, but... He's meant to have all that with the yogurt. Yeah. And then go train. And then go train. So he's going to have to get up, like, to cook it all. Yeah, exactly. He's going to up at fucking four o'clock. What's the smell of fish at that time in the morning? He wants to cook fish at that time. And more about whose partner wants to be woken up to that time in the morning. I know. So, yeah, that's 6 a.m. 8 a.m. was fish oils and estro detox. Lovely. Some really Which, pointless supplements. <laughs> one of the most... Rid- and he was taking them, by the way. And I'm guessing that is with the spin of keeping his estrogen in check. Yeah. Keeping it down. Can, yeah. You Which don't need he to. doesn't need... Unless he's taking a lot of tests. He's not taking... Yeah. So it was like... No, pointless. <laughs> completely yeah. pointless. And again, well, when I saw it, I was like, why, why is he giving him that? It just makes no sense at all. Again, this guy just wants to lose a few pounds. Estro detox. Mental. Um, 10 o'clock, fruit choice. Small handful. Which, you know, not too bad, to be fair. Well, it's not. But even that, there's a lot of... Variance there because yeah. you can have a handful of berries, yeah, or you could have like a handful of banana, which there's a wildly massive different difference calories in, in terms that. of calories again. But it's, there's not been any thought process gone into that, yeah. But, uh, but he is having this Easter detail, yeah, it, so it's exactly because it's gonna be fine, it'll, it'll cancel it out, it'll yeah. cancel it out. And clearly, what's happened here is this guy has been given this meal plan by like a bodybuilding coach for him, yeah. and he's just gone, Oh, right, well, if it works for me, it's gonna fucking work for all of my clients, and so therefore, I'm gonna hand it out to everybody, which yeah. is essentially what he's done here, right? Clearly, which also says that this PT is clear on gear um, <laughs> 12 o'clock green salad with meat choice avocado and cottage cheese nice so again Fantastic. like <laughs> it's not like we're it's, it's not you know it's not even like we're, we're shitting on the food types here by the way guys because like the food it's know. not the like the foods are the foods like obviously they're quote unquote good food yeah yeah, yeah. it's just like you don't need to go to that extreme you don't need to go to these extremes plus there's been no thought process into this guy's actual caloric requirements yeah you know because this you're looking at this i think if you actually like tallied it up especially with things like your avocado your cottage cheese again you know what fruit are you having you know it just it's probably really calorie dense and the chances are this guy was probably in a surplus you're eating this you know um anyway nuts and seeds at two o'clock again no description of what nuts or seeds. and i don't know about you i very rarely advise nuts when people are dieting Uh, well we, we know that well, you know, you're going to mention it, isn't it? Yeah, we know yeah. the high calorie, right? So it's, yeah, they don't give you much back. It's it's not it's not going to be the best choice. Six o'clock steak with green veggies, sweet potato mash, and natural butter. Again, no mention of any like serving sizes or anything. So carbs wise, he's only having potato and fruit. Potato and fruit for the day. Potato so and fruit. Basically, he's just cut all his carbs out. Yeah. At eight o'clock, dark chocolate, eighty five percent times two squares. There's oh, and ev- oh, it says here everything to be cooked in coconut oil. Everything. Everything. Um, and then before bed, BCAs, 
We've got to have your BCAs before yeah. bed, otherwise you'll wake up yeah, small. Exactly. Um yeah, and basically every sing every single day is essentially the same, just with a slight bit of variation in terms of kind of like what the the meat choice might be. Um oh, and he gets a cheat meal on a Saturday at he gets a cheat meal on a Saturday, very specific, at six o'clock. It has to be at six o'clock. It has to be at six right, o'clock. Right, because if it's at seven o'clock, then it, it's gonna cause problems. Yeah, then it's gonna well, cause six o'clock it's like six o'clock is fine. It's like yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um it's like the purge, isn't it? It's just like, there's no rules. Nothing matters. <laughs> Six o'clock. Uh, but I mean, it's just the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, isn't it? It's ridiculous. It's just fucking stupid. And the worst thing is, and obviously I know this, this client's been with me for a while now. He stuck to it. He did it for like three weeks. Fair play, one. Yeah. I was like, mate, I'm surprised you managed to do that long. Even with the estrogen detox. Yeah, he's well. doing it. Yeah. He was taking, yeah. He was taking, because at the end of the day, he doesn't know. Yeah. So yeah, he's yeah. gone into it naive, thinking, well, like, you know, I want to get into shape. This is what he's told me I need to do to get into shape. So this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, ultimately, what basically what happened after this was because that was so extreme, it scared the fucking life out of him. Mm. Right. He was also seeing his PT a couple of times a week. So he was paying a lot of money for this. And um, the PT was just kind of running him into the ground. No consideration of where this guy's training experience was. So he was chronically fatigued and overtrained eating a crazy diet, um, spending a fortune on food, and three weeks in, he's like, this fitness stuff ain't for me. Yeah. It and why wouldn't... For anyone. Uh, and you would like, why wouldn't you? So, and then what actually happened is, he then took about at least another year, potentially even more out of, away from fitness. Yeah. Because then you'll more... have it in his head, if I want that's to lose weight, that's what I've got to do. And that's, and that's what he's got fun. to do. And this is the problem, right? And this is why we've got such an issue with this stuff, because it, it's just actually putting people off trying to do something, right? And trying to make changes. So he's gone, he's gained more weight, he's got more out of shape, and then eventually got in touch with me. So he's been able to save him. <laughs> now he's still struggling. And now he's even fatter again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, even on that, like you mentioned about yeah, the, the PT sessions as well, we're just running him into the ground. Mm. There's so many PTs that wear that as like a badge of honor. Yeah. How much damage can they inflict on yeah. the client? Thinking that the more damage you can inflict, the better the PT you are. But it's like, you're, you're so... scaring them away. You're scared, like you're doing yourself out yeah, of the business like, because who's going to want to keep coming? Like, I, I wouldn't want to keep coming I want to go to the gym, like, and there's, even at my gym now, um, like, there's a couple of PTs. And listen, like, I suppose when you're PTing on the gym floor and things, like, you do have to learn your trade over, you know. And I made these mistakes, when, especially oh, when God, I was no, fresh, yeah. like, yeah, fresh yeah. on the gym floor. You get to, like, 45 minutes, you're like, shit, they've still got 15 minutes left here. Yeah. So you just make up something on the spot. And I see it all the time, like, burpees, ridiculous things. And I'm like, that's not relevant to, clearly yeah. not relevant to what they want Either that, or you'd get, like, 45 minutes in and be like, shit, we're only, like, two exercises yeah. in. I've got half a workout yeah. to do yet. Yeah, one of the two. And, like, so I'm not kind of hating on that side so much because I think that that does come with time mm. and that does come with experience. Like the more you train people, the more you realize actually, and more you train yourself as well, the more you realize that actually you don't need to be doing half the stuff you're doing with clients. But from, from a dieting side of perspective, it's just... No rice cakes in that. No rice cakes either. Missing the trick. So he's fucked it. Missing yeah. the trick. If he'd have had rice cakes, perfect. Yeah. He'd have nailed it. But you know, jokes aside, he's, he's now, I think it's like 20 odd, he dropped about 25 kg. Yeah, and that was just for a flexible approach. So literally, calories and protein is yeah. all he is all he did, and he just did it consistently over a yeah. period of time. He was still able to eat pizza at the weekend, still like able to have a couple of beers and stuff. Obviously, there was times where he had to moderate that more than others, but about twenty five kg ish he dropped. We then went through a gaining phase where he put on about another 10, 10 kilograms. He's now dropped again. He's now actually on holiday at this moment in time, in the best shape of his life. And he hasn't had to take any estro detox. I would say his estrogen's okay, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've well, checked it. Yeah, You've checked it. it. Well, that's gone out well, of hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he's not had to eat fish at 6 a.m. So there we have it. <sighs> well, we had off the. I had uh, an email off the. I think I sent an email out. I'm not even sure. Um, I think I sent an email about one of the ones I'm going to mention. And the reply I got was mm-hmm. this one. And it was um, someone basically saying that she had a coach. And she's been vegetarian or vegan for years. Mm-hmm. And this coach had sent her a meal plan and basically there were no options for... Or there was maybe one option for vegetarian before. or vegan. So she replied to it saying, you know, thanks for sending it through. Trouble is, there's not really any options for me on this. Can you please send me through an alternative where I've got options? And the response she got was literally, this is the only way to do it. If you want it enough, you'll do it. If I tell you to eat dirt, you'll eat dirt. I, I literally couldn't believe it. I was like, I've heard some things. I've never heard of a coach telling someone to eat dirt That's before. That's fucking mental. Like, like mental. What goes through people's heads thinking, oh, yeah, this will go down well. Like, she, she'll respond well to this. This will motivate yeah. her. Yeah, this is what she needs. Yeah. This is what she needs. The, the compost diet. And, this is what everyone needs. 
Well, this is this is why then coaches and trainers can get a bad rep, and because it's just like, how yeah. is it? Because she's going to tell her friends that, her family members that. Do you know what I mean? And if this person's like an online coach, you know, if, um, you never know. Some of these coaches do have weirdly a lot of followers and stuff because mm. maybe they're in shape themselves. Whatever, you don't know. But then that's just it's giving everyone else a bad rep. Yeah. You know what I mean, that's that's what annoys me the most about that. So yeah, I mean, is this person a client now? Or no, no, she's not. She's right. just. Um, okay. I think she's. She's definitely been on some of the blitz photo shoots, um, some of the group shoots. So she's worked okay. with Dan or Mike in the past. Okay. This wasn't Dan or Mike that said this to us. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty Mike, sure. It? it was Mike. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, um, it's uh, yeah. So, and she just follows her stuff. I'm pretty sure she follows you as well. And she f- follows all the emails and whatnot and I speak to her semi frequently. Um, but yeah, literally couldn't believe mental. it. Like being told to eat dirt if that's if what, like, the ego it's of some people. Mental. But, and the thing is as well, right? What, and, and this is some. I've taken on a few clients recently. I don't know if you should just say the guy's name because there's no way in a million years he's going to listen to this podcast. It's called F***. Have you ever heard of him? So I'd never heard of him either, but I've checked him out since. He's got about 100 odd thousand followers on Instagram. Right. And I've taken, weirdly, just recently, about two or three clients on from, from this guy. Um, and actually, all the clients got really good results with him. But basically, I'm short-lived, right? Because mm. basically, all he does, like I kid you not, is just send people, very similar to that coach, like a really restrictive meal plan. And say this is what you're gonna this is what you're gonna do, mm. and then all they do as part of their check in, he charges a lot of money for this as well. By the way, all they do as part of their check in is on a weekly basis tell them what they weigh and how much they've lost. So it would say like week one or starting weight ninety kg, we want eighty eight, lost two kilograms. That's that's the check in because he can't do that maths himself. Yeah, like, just needs to be se- yeah. seriously. That's the there's check-in. a lot of there's a lot of yeah. numbers there to be fair. That basically that's the check in, and then based on that. I mean, he would either say just carry on with the same meals or you'd update the meal plan so it's just less calories, essentially. Yeah. Um, and that was it. And don't get me wrong. The thing is, because he has, he clearly has a huge amount of clients because he's got, I think it's over 100,000 followers. Mm. His results are good, but I guarantee that... If you checked in a year no, down the line with all those results, oh, well, well, they wouldn't be saying, the same. They wouldn't come to me otherwise, right? Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. You know, not, and that's not the fault of the person. It's not the fault of the person think. at all because there's no education, there's no habit building, there's nothing like that. There's no mindset being worked on. It's just, here's a fad diet. It's going to get you from A to B, but you're never going to keep those results long yeah. term. Because he has like such a, a large following and because obviously you will get the odd outlier who will get amazing results with this, this method, um, he can advertise himself really well. Mm. And it's probably... One in, you know, I'd say probably one in 30 more. I don't know. It could be more than that, like, that get these results. But it doesn't matter for him because it's a numbers game. Do you know, does, that, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, it's literally, if you, it's, a, it's all it is is selling a fitness plan and exactly. he's just the face of it. It's yes. not coaching because yeah. all he has to do, if he can sell 50 plans and get 10 results, he can yeah. then use 10 results to sell 100 plans exactly. and get 20 results and then 20 results to get 200 exactly. plans. And it literally just works like that. It's a snowball. It's how they yeah. all do it. Yeah, it's, it's exactly yeah, it's, it's exactly the same. As yeah, it's like counts. a 10% success rate that you use to then get your next cohort exactly. in and pushing and pushing and pushing. Exactly. But Whereas, like I said, again, you know, just going back to what we do, and I know it's something, you know, we've spoken about quite a lot recently, but everything we do is bespoke from like day one and, and that's like, how it literally. should be do you know yeah. what i mean like literally from your assessment week to your training plans like i've never asked someone to well, unless they really needed it for whatever reason i've never asked someone to start on a meal plan like i try to you know everything that we do is is very much individual to that person their yeah. requirements is never any copy and paste i mean i know that our welcome videos alone are like 20 minutes of just really kind of going into detail on what we need to you know we need to focus on just for the first week yeah yeah and it's like that isn't coaching, as you say. You you you're basically spending what money on what should be coaching and get given a plan and just yeah. told to go and do it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, so literally but, that it, it sort of reminds you, doesn't it? Just like the level of detail that you should be going into. Yeah. And how much more you're delivering compared to yeah. what a lot of things are nowadays. Yeah. Um and yeah, so I, I had another one, a current client at the minute who's doing really well. He travels loads with work, so we have to plan ahead a lot for his food. We have to sort of be on it a bit with that. And we have to be flexible for when he is going down and staying over places mm-hmm. and this, that, and the other. So that he can't, because he can't just meal prep and take everything with him. Um, and he was showing me, he previously worked with a coach. And I think he dropped like 10 kilos-ish with this oh, coach. Yeah, so but that. after 10 weeks, he was just completely burnt out. Like right. he just felt horrific. And it, it was like, he just couldn't stick to the diet plan. He couldn't stick to the training plan and all this, that, and the other. And he was showing me the plan. And he was showing me messages and he, on this plan he had was 100 grams of almonds a day, like had to be eaten. 
every single day, which I think off the top of my head, I think is somewhere around the high 500s to 600-ish yeah, calories. I would say easily. Which for him at the minute, he's losing weight consistently. We're on about 1,800 a day. So you're saying like a third of his calories were from almonds, yeah. which are what? Like a handful? It's not going to fill yeah. you up. And so he realized this after a while because he didn't know just how calorific they were. And this coach had said, this is your meal plan. Do not use my fitness pal. Do not change anything. Like yeah. you stick to this. Yeah. And, and he, he ended up my fitness pal and it just out of interest and realized how high it was. So he asked this coach, he can messaged I, him and be like, change it? well, he just said, are you sure about this? He was like, these seem really, really high. And yeah. I don't think it's a good idea. And this coach literally, he said, just flipped on him and was like, you know, don't question me. This is the plan. This is what we will either do it. You do it or basically we don't work together. Don't. He was like, delete my, he literally told him, delete my fitness pal. And he had it all. He showed me like he had it all in capital letters, the messages, like like he was shouting. Wow. He was like, delete my fitness pal. Don't ever question me again. You've come to me for help. This is the plan. This is what you're doing. If you don't like it, we can't work together. It's fucking insane. And it's just like, it's insane. Where, like, someone's paying you for help, and yes, yeah. you've got to sometimes, you've got to be a little bit upfront with them if they're not doing what they need to be doing, but, th I mean, not that. Mm. Like, you can have a stern word with someone, or you can give them a bit of a nudge to be like, come on, like, you know you need to be doing a bit better than this, or, you know, we yeah. need to step it up a bit. But not that. Like, that's yeah, ridiculous. I know. I know. But that's that's dictating, isn't it? There's no coaching. Co well, no again, it's not, yeah, it's not coaching, it's not coaching, is, coaching it? is it? It's just a dictatorship. It's just someone saying, do this. Don't do anything else, right? And the fact that he's even saying, don't download my fitness pal, don't put anything to my fitness pal. See, this is part of the issue, right? Because again, my fitness pal, by some people, be you know, you might be told it's obsessive to try for you. It's complete bullshit, right? If you've done it, if you're doing it in a proper manner with proper guidance, because what he should be saying is, this is if he wants to go down a meal plan route, like fine. But what he should be saying is, this is your meal plan, this is how many calories it is, this is the number of grams of protein, this is the number of grams of calories, and this is the reason we're doing it. Yeah. In order to maybe then balance it out long term with my fitness pal. So we can kind of mm. so this client can then get an understanding of, all right, well, that's why I'm eating this, and that's why I'm eating X amount of grams of protein, and that's why I'm on this many calories. So at least he's understanding it a bit yeah. more. Because yeah. without the education, this is the same with like fucking Weight Watchers some world, whatever. Like they're just bottling up a calorie deficit with no education because yep. what happens is people lose the weight, they go away, they feel great for a very short period of time, but because they've not had an education, because they've not done any habit building, because they've not changed their, the thought process around food, all they do is go back to eating and doing the same things that they were doing prior so to there's nothing else the to thing. Do. Yep. Yeah, so, but it's clever marketing by these companies because then what do you do? You go back to them. Yeah, yeah. Ah, that worked for me. I when you're ready, to do come that. back again and we'll do it yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. It's literally exactly that. And that's the same with these coaches that we're on about with meal plans and stuff. Like, they almost kind of know you're going to be back to them unless mm. they come across us and we yeah. save them. <laughs> well, that, but that's the difference. Like when we do aggressively diet people down, there's always there's, there's always method behind it. There's we, method we behind it. it. And we, we, we're, ne we're never going to sit here and be like, oh, how we do it. It's, you know, we don't preach a sustainable approach when it comes to those mm -hmm. aggressive fat loss. It's not every person that we have, but like blitz and stuff, which is yeah. aggressive. We don't say it's a sustainable approach because it's not, but what it is, is an adaptable approach so yeah. that, okay, you, this is quite aggressive, but what you need to do once we finish this to maintain it is basically the same stuff. You're just going to adjust your numbers a little bit. Yeah. So you don't need to change your routine. And the way that we've done it is to adapt it to the routine that you already had. So it's not like you have to change your life to fit the plan. It's we'll adjust the plan to fit your life. Yeah. We'll go quite aggressive up front. And then when it comes to maintaining it, you're basically just pulling back on a few yeah, things. Yeah. And like I've had in the, this past week, a couple of uh, old clients reach out, some from Blitz, some from one-to-one. -one. Literally have sent me like pictures from when they stopped coaching a year ago to now. And they're literally still in as good, if not better. One of them was even in better shape. Yeah. And he was like, I've not changed anything. He was like, I've just stuck to the original approach that we had. Yeah. I've adjusted my food here and there. I've changed my training plan up a little bit and I've just been consistent. That's, that's exactly and how it should be. Yeah. And yeah. that's like a year down the line. Yeah. And like, we know, listen, you're never going to, you're not going to be like peeled, shredded year round. Like that's, that's, you shouldn't be either. I'd say, no. I'd say it's boring no. and unhealthy, right? But what you should be doing is, so for example, again, I've got, um, I'm coaching one of my clients who did the the shoot last year, Danny. You know, Danny, great mm -hmm. shape. He's like three kilograms heavier at the moment, carrying a little bit more body fat, but training's great. I'm only mentioning Danny because I was talking to him earlier this week. Um, his train training's fantastic. His biofeedback's really good. He feels good. He's sleeping well. He's still managing to have a few beers at the weekend. Yeah. And now we're something like eight weeks away from holiday. All he does is, yeah, turn it up a notch. Yeah. And that's, and that's how it. it should be. And nothing really changes day nothing to day. Really his routine's changes. the same. Yeah, exactly. His meal timings, the kind of food he's eating. Yeah. It's all the same. Yeah. It's just the amounts are different. Exactly. And he doesn't really, I mean, 
don't leave me, Danny. But we, we like, <laughs> he doesn't Please. need me because he's doing. He's, he knows what to do. Like yeah. he's got it. He just likes having me there for the accountability, the yeah. planning, the structure, all that kind of stuff. But yeah. he doesn't need me because yeah. he know he knows it now. But if that's I, how it should yeah. be. Yeah, and that, again, that should be that's how coaching should be done. Yeah. So if you have been getting me or plans like that or dictatorships where you're told not to question it or to eat Eat dirt. dirt. (laughs) Yeah. Just know that there is a much, much better. That's the worst one. That's the worst. I mean, the meal plan's bad. Don't be wrong. Right. But that could just be uh, like a new PT, completely naive, like, you know, whatever. It could be a a lot more to it, but eat dirt. Eat dirt. If I tell you to eat dirt, you will eat dirt. You would lose weight to be fair. I mean, it just reminds me of that old little Britain skit where she tells them all to eat dust. Like that's all that you reminded. Yeah. That's all that reminded me of. (laughs) We'll get yeah. a part of that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it for that one. Yep. Cheers, guys. Thanks yep. for listening. Thanks for listening to the rants. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.